Hello, everyone. Welcome back again. Uh, another great question here. Uh, this one from Giraffe Lover 69 Hello, I'm going to MSTA school next month. Could you do a video on the daily routine and what to expect at A school? I love this question because it really gets to the foundation of going into the MST world. So I will say that, well, I put it this way. I went to A school near the beginning of my career. I am getting close to the retirement age of my career. So that could give you some indication of how long it's been. Having said that, I, I don't think that it's really changed all that much. I have had the opportunity to poke my head into a couple A school classes over the years, and I know people that have worked on the curriculum for the class. So I think I still have a pretty decent amount of knowledge as to what goes into it. I'll start off with the routine part of it, and then I'll get into more of the technical stuff you might you might have. A school, I like to think of as a kind of a middle ground between basic training and normal training you'll have the rest of your Coast Guard career. You're not getting yelled at. You're not being treated like you would be in basic, but you are kind of less than a permanent party. You do have uniform inspections. You do have to march to class. You have to really be cognizant of dressing everybody by their proper rank, which you would do anyway, but eyes are kind of more on you to be doing things properly. They'll, they'll inspect your rooms, things like that. Make sure you keep your wits about you. Maintain military bearing. Remember where you are at all times. Don't let the more carefree nature of the class make you lower your barrier for how you should be ha handling yourself. When it comes to the routine, uh, it's pretty nice, honestly. You'll do PT, uh, uh, but not every day. When I was there, it wasn't every day. It was usually a couple times a week. You get up early, go do PT. You would go swimming or we'd run or just do different exercises. And, and it was good for team building. Pretty much your classes are going to all take place in the same room for the most part. And you will go through kind of just like with college or high school, really, you'll go through the whole curriculum and you'll have different units that you'll that you'll do. Um, so you'll do your pollution responder, you'll do facilities. I don't remember if we did a whole lot in containers. I think they will touch on containers. Containers in general is something that I don't see a lot of in service wides, and it's not really represented a lot in, in the PQS, like the, the rating advancement packets. So I don't think that they spend that much time on it, but I do think they talk about it. But your bread and butter is going to be your pollution responder, a little bit of FOSER stuff, which is kind of the response world, but more senior uh, level facilities and port state control and uh, strike team, which is more of a mobile unit. Facilities, pollution responder, port state, as I recall, were like the things we really honed in on. And then safety generally. I mean, safety is a big part of the MST world. Safety for yourself, safety for the people you're working with, whether it's the contractors, whether it's a responsible party, whether it's the facility rep or whoever it is you might be working with, one of your paramount responsibilities is safety. When it comes to the day-to-day -day stuff, you'll do your PT, you'll get together as a unit, you'll march to class together, you'll have a squad leader, you'll have class, you'll have lunch, and you'll go back to class. Sometimes you'll have like team building exercises in the afternoon. As you go through different the different units that we talked about, you'll oftentimes do scenarios, role play scenarios. Uh, we even got out at times, did like a mock oil spill response uh, right out there on the river, right, out, right outside of uh, Trace in Yorktown. We went to a facility like to do a facility spot check. When it comes to your responsibilities, again, obviously it's the curriculum. You'll also be on, you'll have a duty, you'll have a watch. I believe it's still the same when I was there. It was computer lab, which is actually a really great duty because you're just making sure everyone's signed in and out, really, and you can read a book, you can check your email, do whatever for a few hours. A big thing to remember with MSTA school, listen to the teachers, keep those study guides, and use tabs and highlighters to note where the pages are that you're going to need. Most of the tests at A school are going to be open book. So when you're taking your tests, there's really no reason why you shouldn't pass because you go you're going to have that information there, but make sure you have it readily available. They're usually not going to let you use the study guide packets. 
So take the study guide packets, study it back in your room, do some cross-referencing with the study packet and the CFRs, your Code of Federal Regulations. Note where the important places are so that you can quickly get to them when the time comes. Mentioning CFRs, uh, Code of Federal Regulations, those are going to be your bread and butter academically when you're at A school. You will be using those you pretty much in the MST world, we use those for everything, whether it's containers, facilities, pollution response, FOSCR, all those port state, even, you know, everything uses the CFRs. Being able to navigate them is in and of itself is a skill, you know, regardless of the, the material, the content, just knowing how to get through them, how to, how to find your way through the different sections and knowing where to look to find stuff is is a skill in and of itself and you'll learn how to do that while you're there pay attention to that take that seriously because that will really help you don't want to be held back because you're lost in the cfrs and you don't know what you're doing or where you're supposed to be looking the instructors are very helpful they will help you out they won't really be appreciative if you're if you're not listening and you're not paying attention and then you don't know how to use your resources when the time comes. They're going to expect you to be self-sufficient in those areas. Finally, I think the best way to ensure success is to create networks with people. Kind of identify the goof-offs and identify the smart leaders who are going to go far in their career. It's usually not hard to tell who's who. Ally yourselves with the people that are going to help you succeed and make your own future in the Coast Guard as bright as it can be. That's going to help a lot. Networking is a good thing to do while you're there, and it's going to be something that's going to be important as your career progresses. So anyway, I hope that that helps. Again, great question. Really appreciate the questions. Please send me a follow-up. Let me know when you're at A school, how it's going, and if you have any any advice or anything like that, drop me a comment, and uh, I'll be more than happy to, to help out any way I can. I hope that, uh, hope that A school goes well for you. Wish you nothing but success, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.